hi guys so today I'm going to do something uh, different I'm going to to do a market breakdown on uh, Aussie dollar so lately I've been getting some uh, emails some requests on uh, on how do I get to sit down and analyze a currency pay or a commodity pay how do i come to a decision to say okay i'm going to trade long or i'm going to trade short on this asset so i've decided to do an example market structure breakdown uh, on aussie dollar and eventually how i come up to a decision to say whether i'll be hunting for short trades or for long trades so to get a few things out of the way i'm not uh, i'm not a scalper guys so don't expect me to go all the way to the one minute chart or the five minute chart the lowest time frame i'll break down a structure to is uh, 15 minutes but that is if i really want to have a tight stop loss that is if i don't want to expose myself too much to the market that is minimizing my risk so that's number one number two when you're doing your market analysis you need to understand market relationships right understand that say for instance we're going to look at aussie dollar today right understand the other market relations that aussie dollar has got right that is that is to say that you need to look at uh, dollar index you need to understand how gold is moving since australia is one of the largest exporter of gold so whatever happens with gold aussie dollar reacts whatever happens with dollar index aussie dollar reacts because of the fact that it's one of the currency pairs in that basket for dollar index now remember dollar index is uh, seven currencies that are measured together to come up with dollar index we've got the swiss franc we've got the canadian dollar we've got the aussie dollar we've got uh, japanese yen we've got the euro We've got the pound and we've got the new zealand dollar so those pairs combined together measured against the us dollar we come up with the dollar index so whatever happens with dollar and uh, by default everyone will trade currencies you must know what the dollar index is doing is the dollar bullish is the dollar bearish because in 10 when the dollar is bullish majors are going to fall when the dollar is bearish major currencies are going to be bullish you see that's number two things uh, of the things that you need to get out of the way this is something that you do away from this chart before you break down the order flow on the chart so i'm just highlighting some of the things that you have to make sure you get out of the way you understand what's going on right so number one i mentioned that uh we need to understand what the bias that we are in number two we need to understand market relationships number three seasonal tendencies every asset every currency every commodity every futures market asset has got what we call seasonal tendencies whereby uh, for instance you expect gold to create a lower low maybe in march or you expect dollar to trade higher after every elections or during election year you expect dollar to be bearish those are what we call seasonal tendencies so you must understand seasonal tendencies of the asset that you are trading you see you must understand now number four 
understand interest rates right you need to understand the interest rates market so you need to understand what the central bank for oc is doing when it comes to their interest rate and uh, with that you will know that okay when dollar is uh, bullish you're gonna have to pick maybe a country with low rates interest and a country which has got higher rates interest you pay the two the country with low rates is going to be under pressure if the dollar is bearish you're going to pick a country with higher interest rates and a country with low interest rates the country with high interest rates is going to appreciate in price meaning it's going to be strengthening so you must understand interest rates number five you must know the cot report commitment of traders report which comes out uh, saturday half past 10 pm our time but the only disadvantage that we have when it comes to the cot report is that the official release is on tuesday right if the official release is on tuesday why is it that us retail traders we get it on saturday 10 pm So you need to understand the fact that the reason why we get the COT report uh, four days after when it has been released, you need to understand why is that. So the COT report is going to help you in determining whether the institutions or the commercial traders or the non-commercial traders, which are the guys that actually move the what the market. So you will be understanding how are they holding their positions are they increasing their positions or are they decreasing their positions because remember ultimately you need to trade along with them you can't trade against the big guys people with big pockets you can't trade against them so if the non-commercials or the commercials are long on gold make sure you also be hunting for long positions on gold but that doesn't mean that, okay, when the report comes out, oh, you should go long on gold. That's where you have to break now the market structure. And you see that, okay, this is what's happening. So if they're long on gold, you'll be hunting for price to go into discount for you to trade long from. So those are the few aspects that you as a person, you have to get out of the way. You have to do that analysis by yourself before you go to the asset that you are trading and break down the order flow right you have to be in a position to do that if you haven't joined the mentorship you can join the mentorship this is some of the things that i teach in the mentorship group which uh, you rarely find in the retail world most people out there uh, they base most of their analysis using indicators and uh, yes i'm not saying indicators do not work but you are reacting to what price has already done and it's not sustainable you're not gonna use a rsi or moving average for the rest of your life guys you need to be in a position to understand how the market moves what affects the price you see you need to understand order flow you need to be in a position to read a naked chart like a clean chart because yes you can benefit you can profit from uh, using indicators or from using uh, robots but at the end of the day eventually the market catch up the brokers they do catch up and you're going to be on a losing streak that is going to hurt you big time so I urge most of you guys to at least try, just try slowly but surely, just try to read uh, the price action without any indicators. If you are going to be in this for a long haul, uh, make sure you understand price action. 
understand what the market is doing without you applying a robot or an indicator be in a position to dissect that chart like what i'm gonna show you now so yeah i have talked uh, more than enough let's get on onto the chart so we've got aussie dollar here which is a monthly chart that's that's basically where you start from higher time frame always precedes everything so now you need to define your order flow you need to define where the market is you need to define the bias now as you all know dollar is bullish dollar is rallying all the way to the upside but it's going to find some retracements from those uh, resistance areas so if dollar is bullish how are you going to trade uh, aussie dollar aussie dollar is going to be bearish right so from a monthly point of view the first thing that you need to do switch to a line chart all right the reason why you switch to a line chart is you need to mark out uh, the turning points in the market right you need to mark out the exact turning point so yeah price differs guys from broker to broker now you need to be in a position to look at the market six months uh, back 12 months back for you to make a decision regarding current price action but if price has come up to a level where it's trading in confluence with an old premium or discount array then you have to put that into consideration so now from this uh, line chart aussie dollar monthly you can clearly see we've got a law here that was created and we've got this high you see we've got this high in the market then we've got these two short term low and a short term high that was created remember this is a monthly chart so i'm just going to highlight those four there's something i want you to see guys before we go any further because i'm going to get rid of those but they're there for a reason to help me see the turning points now once you've done that switch back to your candlestick now when you look now where those turning points were look at where those turning points right so the first turning point which is this high that is our last up candle that formed the high our last up candle in terms of institutional order flow is what that is our bearish order block an area where we're going to be hunting for short trades as you can see aussie dollar found resistance in a premium array bearish order block is a premium array now the second tipping point can you see how those tipping points disregarded the week can you see this was the turning point the last down close candle this guy this is the last down close candle and in terms of institutional order flow that is our bullish order block an area where we hunt for long positions when price comes back to now the third tipping point was this area here you see so this is the third tipping point which was our last down candle before we saw this move to the upside now it's very important guys you need to see this move can you see this is our last down candle and then we had price massively move to the upside where this last up candle with price massively move to the downside what does that tell you that tells you displacement Displ displacement can only be provided in the market by institutional traders the guys with the big pocket pockets they're the ones that move the market that is crucial to your analysis as an institutional trader it's crucial you see remember guys uh i'm not i'm not talking in a retail mindset a retail mindset most people they're not making it you see 
only a few make it that's why 90 percent 90 or i don't know 95 percent of retail traders they don't make money in the market yes you can make small uh, gains on smaller time frame small profits but that's not to say you have killed the market that is nothing compared to what the market really can offer you so for you to be able to succeed you need to change your mindset your retail mindset needs to fall guys you need to get rid of that mindset of uh, trading as a retail trader now the fourth turning point was this area here you can see that was the last up candle in this bull run the last up candle right in the bull run where we eventually saw price move to the downside but can you see the difference now we did have displacement here there was no displacement and price traded to the upside from where from this old bearish order block because market broke to the upside here you can see market broke in this candle here market broke to the upside broke an old high an old high what rest above an old high buy stops so the buy stops were cleared market came back and eventually continued with uptrend now coming back to current price action dollar is bullish so we're expecting Aussie dollar to uh, be under pressure for shots shots will be ideal on Aussie dollar now remember this is my personal uh, analysis you are going to take this analysis at your own peril i'm not a licensed financial advisor so this is for educational purposes only so at this moment we are hunting for shots on aussie dollar right so i've highlighted the tapping points one two three these are my main criteria for the analysis which I'm going to do. Now, let's get rid of the let's get rid of these lines because I don't want my chart to be a bit scattered. I need a clean chart. But now I'm going to highlight this last up candle because it's in relation to what has happened in the past three months on Aussie dollar, though it is from 2017. So we're going to highlight the body, the body that is the price action where the institutions were trading. The week is all about uh, stop hands and manipulation. Then I'm going to highlight this last down candle before the up move that we saw, before the displacement to the upside. Now, this is our bearish order block, right? And this is the 50% main threshold that is to say the equilibrium the middle point of the bearish order block right same applies here let me just copy here this is the middle point of our bullish order block the last down candle before the massive move to the upside so that's our bullish order block so with these two order flow criteria that i've marked i can already see that okay we've got aussie here trading back into the 0 0.715 and it found resistance right where did it find the resistance on the monthly bearish order block this last up candle so this will be an ideal area for shorts so before the market did get there already you'd have recognized okay this is a bearish order block so when price comes here i'm going to be a short trader and you can see it offered great opportunities to go to the downside in the month of february the market fell 220 pips from the bearish order blocks main threshold now with that said i've already defined the bias you can see already that Aussie dollar is in bearish order flow. It's trading away from a bearish order block on the monthly time frame. So now I'm going to drop down to 
a week the weekly time frame now with the mindset that i know that okay dollar is your aussie dollar is trading away from a premium array right it's trading away from a premium array which in this case is a monthly bearish order block now dropping down to a weekly time frame you can see already let me just go back to the month and mark out so we have our bearish op so that's on the month so this is our monthly bearish order block right and this one is our monthly bullish which is most probably the target for downside moves right so this is our monthly bullish order block so this is this is what i do guys how i analyze the market i highlight all the criterias of what i'll be looking for and then we also have the 50 percent mean threshold of mn bearish ob why is the 50 percent mean threshold important because that's your ideal area for shots when price comes back right we also have the 50 percent mean threshold of the bullish order block it's ideal entry for your shots right so now this is the markings on the monthly chart now on that chart also on this monthly chart you see now i have zoomed in i had left out one thing you can clearly see we had the displacement price moving away from the last down candle from the bullish ob price massively moves away it was only offering buy side liquidity i have to apologize in advance guys the video might be a bit long but i'm trying to show the people out there what i teach in the group uh so we had a massive displacement to the upside now you can see there's there's an area in price action where price hasn't traded to there's imbalance in in other words market is not balanced and the high of the bullish order block right the high of the bullish order block which is coming in at uh, 9 uh, 0 0.7227 72447 and the law of last week i'm going to use the law of last week let me just do like this in the law of last week there's this gap here in price action this gap that is what we call fair value gap right this is what we call a fair value gap and we've got a liquidity void here because there's there's a range in price which was not balanced right price was just moving to the upside so at one point in the near future we expect market to rebalance that price action to close that fair value gap as it's doing so that is your short position now let's go to weekly time frame right we still have our fair value gap right that's the monthly fair value gap now on the weekly time frame can you see this last up candle here this one i'm going to highlight it this last up candle here it's inside the last that last up candle is inside the monthly bearish order block which we defined here right so meaning that is also an ideal area okay let me do this let me do this yeah let me do this this is much better so it's inside so this is the 50 percent now this is on a weekly time frame guys 
you can clearly see now I'm on a weekly time frame. So this is our weekly. So that's our weekly bearish OB, right? So this is our weekly bearish order block. As you can see, I don't have any indicators whatsoever. It's just me reading the price action. So this is our 50% mean threshold of the weekly bearish order block, which is the most important thing now, since I've defined that the bias is what is bearish. So I'll be hunting for short trades on the lower time frame. In this case, which is H4 and H1 time frame. So now we can already see how price has been finding resistance in this premium array here. That's our weekly bearish order block. Price came back here, found resistance right at the 50% and it dropped 98 all the way, 187 pips. Same applies, it came back in here, dropped 279 pips. That is where your opportunities lie. You see, this is in that range. That is where you would have been shorting the market. Now, we're going to daily time frame. Now, since we are hunting for short trades, where do we need price to trade to for us to trade short? Now, remember, this now is guided by what dollar is doing. If we see dollar pushing to the upside, or the dollar is going to push to the downside. If we see dollar pushing to the downside, by dollar I mean DXY, dollar index. If we see dollar index push to the downside, that is when we anticipate Aussie dollar to trade into a premium array where we are going to be shorting from. Now, on the daily time frame, you can clearly see we've got a daily bearish order block here, right? This is our daily bearish OB, right? And this is the 50% mean threshold right let me just copy this quickly right so properties 50 percent d1 bearish ob so the dotted lines they represent the 50 percent mean threshold of uh, of the bearish order blocks and then we have I need to mark the we have our T1 bearish OB right so this is our D1 bearish OB let me just zoom in uh, zoom out right this is our D1 so right in here I'll be anticipating price to do something like this whenever price trades back in here then I'm shorting the market the confluence which is there guys what i'll be looking for you can see already we've got the law of the bearish order block on daily time frame the law coming in at 77041 the law that's coming in at 77041 and the high from tuesday so this friday thursday wednesday tuesday tuesday's high right Choose this high which is coming in at uh, let me just mark these prices for you guys so choose this high is coming in at 76627 and then uh, we've got the law of the daily bearish order block coming in at uh, that's 77039 you see between the price action in that range You see the price action between these two price points we've got a daily fair value gap just gonna call it fvg for now there's a fair value gap in here and you see this candle here that shows displacement to the downside this candle that shows displacement to the downside highlights a liquidity void and under normal circumstances, every fair value gap mostly 
is accompanied by a liquidity void. Okay, let me just uh, do this quickly. So I put 90 there. So this is a liquidity void. So we've got a liquidity void there, which we anticipate price to fill, right? Now, remember, this is our weekly bearish order block. This is the 50% of the bearish order block. Now, we are on a daily. So we've got a high, short term high, and then we've got the low that was created on Thursday. If I'm to place my fibs there, guys, watch. Remember, fibs are not your holy grail, but they guide you in determining your entries and your exits. You can see price above equilibrium is inside premium. Between equilibrium and 79%, this range here, this range in price action, all this range, this is where you anticipate your short term trade entries. You expect price to come in this range and trade low. That means any short entry that I'll be taking in here, my stop is way above 0 0.80064. Why is that? Because I'm not expecting price to trade that high up. And if price does trade that high up, it means the market structure has changed. You accept that and you move on and look for the next setup. So if price does move above 0 0.800, then this structure here might have turned bullish, right? But for every shot that I'm taking, my stop is way above 0 0.80065. I hope you understood perfectly how I've come to that decision to say, okay, I'll be hunting for short trades on uh, Aussie dollar. But when I go to H4, which is now my entry time frame, this is where I define my uh, entries. With the FIB settings placed, you can see price 0 0.77695. So that's basically 0 0.777 institutional price point is coming inside this up candle, which is a daily, daily bearish order block. We've got another, no, this is a H4 uh, bearish order block. We have our daily bearish order block in here, right around 0 0.77283. So that also is an ideal area to short the market this high for scalpers price break and close below is going to offer opportunities to trade short so i hope this has been uh, a bit insightful and uh, you have learned a thing or two but of course there's there's a bit of few things that i didn't talk about which is only reserved for the mentorship group but in a nutshell this is how i analyze the the market how i come to a decision to say okay i'm going to be shorting this pair or i'm going to go long on this pair but in this case aussie dollar in the coming week or weeks i'll be hunting for short trades this liquidity for it here i expect price to fill it up and then once that happens that's my trigger for hunting for short trades so yeah i hope this has been insightful and uh, you found some tips and tricks in this short top-down analysis on uh, aussie dollar and uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel guys just sub click the subscription button there and make sure the bell notification icon is selected so that each and every time I release uh, a video, you get to have it straight to your inbox and you don't miss a thing. So yeah, if you haven't joined the mentorship, send me a message, email, 
uh, I can gladly attend to you. We need to think in a different way, guys. We need to be able to uh, grow as traders. But the way we can only do that is if we change our mentality. Yes, signals. There are signal groups that work, but most of them, they do not work. There are robots that work, but most of them, they do not work. Indicators, they do work to some extent, but in most cases, you are only reacting to what price has already done. An indicator cannot predict the future for you. It only analyzes what the market has already done. So yeah, we need to learn how to trade like the institutions. We need to learn to trade as institutional traders. Reach your mindset must fall, guys. So yeah, if you have any questions, uh, comments, just uh, send me a message or you can comment on this uh, video here and I'll gladly get back to you. With that said, guys, I wish you Good luck and happy trading. Thank you.